So we're going to start talking about storing storage of files. And the first setup that I want to do is just a simple profile image. I just want to be able to save a profile image somewhere in the cloud so that I can get it back later and actually show the user's profile image. This is pretty basic for any web page, but it's actually pretty hard to do. There's at least a lot of steps to go through to make it work. So we're going to use the next couple of videos to try and make a setup that can actually do that for you. And of course I'll have some code ready for you that you can just grab from GitHub and use if you want to. But what is it that, that I actually want to accomplish here? What is it that I want to show you? Here I've added on our beautiful course planner, I've gone in and added on the setting page a profile area over here. And here I can actually click or drop an image here to try to upload one. So I'll just do the click one just to make it simple here. And here I have a some kind of image. I'll double click it and it'll pop up here. And now before I send it to the server, I haven't talked to the server yet. I want to actually crop it to select what area I want to show. And then I'll say save. It'll send the data to the server. It'll come back with the actual image here and just photo saved information using a toaster. If I want to change the image, I can do that by selecting a new image or the same image, moving this dot around and doing a save again. And now it'll set up a new image for me and save it. And you can notice there are a few glitches here and there. It doesn't matter. We'll fix them as we move along. But how do we actually do this? What's going on here? We're only looking at the client side now. Let me show you this by showing you some drawings. I've made this beautiful set of drawings. Please don't copy them, they're mine, they're so pretty. But how does that actually happen? Well, first step was that we wanted to select an image. So we use an Angular directive, and there you can actually very simply go in and ask, show me your file system, select the file, and send it back to me. That was step one. That was what I did when I selected the file and just showed the image locally on the client side. Then I said, okay, then crop the image. So I went to another directive where I can actually crop images, make them smaller, make them look like I want to. So we're going to have a look at that as well. So now the image is cropped. It looks like the way I want it to. The next step, send it over the wire. So I sent the image here, the very specific cropped image that I want to send, send it over the wire to our backend where we have Express and Node ready to grab the image using a new route. So we're going to build ourselves a new route here that we can actually manipulate images and work with images. When uh, Express and Node get these images, they take them and they send the beautiful new image all the way to a new cloud service that we're going to use called Cloudinary. Now Cloudinary is a free service out there, at least it's free, just like OpenShift, you have to, you have some limits on how many images you can send, how much you can use, stuff like that. But it'll store your image for you in the cloud and when it's done it will actually go down and return a URL for you pointing at that image. So here we come back with a URL. Okay, now what to do with the URL? Well, you have to store the URL somewhere so that we know later when the user comes back and says, hey, give me back my image. So we'll take the URL and send it over to the database and update our user object here or a user collection with the actual photo URL. So now the URL is stored here in the database, right there. Okay, so I get a reply back from the database. Congratulations, you updated your user. Now the user has the URL, so he knows where to get the image. Then we take the image, converts it into a base 64 representation of the image. We'll get into what that is, then we'll send it back all the way back to the client and the client will present it inside the profile just like I showed you earlier so it will pop up right here but that's actually all the steps we have to do to store this image in Cloudinary why do it like this? well we could just store the image directly in the database but it's proven that that might slow down your database so that's why we don't want to store images or any binary files in the database if we can avoid it it is possible but it's not something we want to do so that's the goal of the next lessons. Hope to see you next time.